Hello and welcome to part three of the online training for North Branch Nature Center's Amphibian Road Crossing Program. In this section, we will review each of the nine amphibian species included in our survey protocol. For each species, we will show pictures and discuss their life history and how to identify them. Growing up to nine inches long, the spotted salamander is the largest amphibian expected on our survey routes. They're also one of the most charismatic with a dark black body covered with bright yellow spots. Spotted salamanders also have a broad head with prominent black eyes. They're common and one of the most common amphibians across Vermont. Though listed as a species of greatest conservation need, due to their habitat requirements. After spending most of the winter underground and small rodent tunnels, spotted salamanders emerge in late winter and early spring on warm, rainy nights. They move across the land toward breeding sites, such as vernal pools, fish-free ponds, and wetlands. This is often occurring in mid to, er in mid to late March, as well as early April, in warmer areas of Vermont in late April into May in some of the colder, more northeasternly reaches. Individuals often return to the same breeding site every year. Adults are feeding on invertebrates such as earthworms, millipedes, spiders, and other insects. An interesting fact is that spotted salamanders have unique spots, sort of like our fingerprints. And you can actually identify individuals year to year returning to the same site by looking at their spot pattern. It's possible that new technology will allow us to automate this project process of identifying individuals, sort of like using facial recognition software. And you can see from the map on the right that they are found in almost every town in the state. A relative of the spotted salamander, another one of our mole salamander species, is the Jefferson salamander. It's slightly smaller, growing only seven and a half inches long. The body size, shape, and color is similar to a spotted salamander in that they are heavy bodied, long, and have a dark gray or almost black base color, but lack the yellow spots and instead sometimes have a light blue flecking on their sides. This is another species of special concern in Vermont. Like other mole salamanders, Jefferson salamanders often spend the winter underground and come out in the spring to migrate to vernal pools and other breeding areas. Jefferson salamanders are one of the earliest amphibian species to migrate in the spring they're often traveling over snow and reaching breeding pools that are still partially frozen over. Like other mole salamanders, Jefferson salamanders are courting females using swimming displays and grabbing on, the males are grabbing onto females with their heavy hind legs. They also use chemical pheromones to attract females and the males will lay sperm packets called spermatophores on the bottom of the breeding pool and will guide females toward their sperm packets. Here's a couple additional photos of Jefferson salamanders to show the variation in color. On the upper left, you can see a Jefferson salamander that has a much lighter colored body, almost a light gray brown. And on the bottom right picture, you can see one that has some of the light gray blue, uh, light blue flecking on the gray brown body. Larva take um, two to four months to develop in that breeding pool and once they leave the pool it may take another three years to become sexually mature which is one of the reasons this species and others are sensitive to mortality at road crossing sites because they take years to reach sexual maturity. On the right you can see the map uh, of this species in Vermont. It is a lower elevation species so found mainly in the Champlain Valley and the Connecticut River Valley with some in other lower areas of the state. The blue spotted salamander is a close relative of the Jefferson salamander. 
but a little bit smaller, only growing up to five and a half inches long. They are a little bit darker than the Jefferson salamander, with a dark brownish gray body, almost approaching a black color, with these bright blue spots throughout. They're one of the smallest mole salamanders in Vermont, and spending their most time uh, underground, underneath logs and other cover. They're most commonly found in the Champlain Valley, in forested wetlands, and in floodplains. And similar to other mole salamanders, they're eating earthworms, slugs, other bugs, and insects. On the right, you see the map of the blue spotted salamander, restricted primarily to the Champlain Valley as well as some in the Taconic Valley in the lower Connecticut River Valley, with some pockets in other low lying areas of the state. One important note about this species is that it often hybridizes with the Jefferson salamander, and they produce offspring that have an appearance in between the two species. The photo is showing a salamander that has a lighter color overall, you know, a light gray brown, and is a bit larger and heavier bodied similar to a Jefferson salamander, but shows extensive blue flecking, more similar to a spotted salamander. This makes identifying pure blue spotted salamanders really challenging. In fact, when these species hybridize, most of them are female. And so the only way to tell the, the blue spotted salamander is to find a male that has a swollen vent at the base of its tail. So for our volunteers, we're asking that potential blue spotted salamander sightings are accompanied with uh, descriptions and ideally photographs. One of the smallest salamanders you'll encounter on our survey is the four-toed salamander. Growing up to only four inches long and being very slender, it's one of my favorite salamanders with this beautiful rusty colored back uh, and intricate herringbone grooves and a distinct white belly with black spots. It's listed as a species of greatest conservation need and is restricted in Vermont to only a few areas of the Champlain Valley and Lower Connecticut River Valley. It's likely that this species uh, is underserveyed in this state. It blends in very well especially at road crossings on dirt roads, and is quite small, unlike a spotted salamander, which is easily found if it's crossing a road. So it's possible with more extensive surveys that other populations will be found throughout the Connecticut River and Champlain Valley. This is another species that is migrating in the spring from upland forests down to lower wetlands, mainly in the Champlain Valley. And it's laying its eggs actually underneath moss in uh, next to breeding pools uh, on logs and rocks and when the eggs hatch they'll actually fall into the water of the pool. Another species that you may encounter is the eastern red-backed salamander. This is not a vernal pool breeder like the other salamanders we've talked about. Uh, these red-backed salamanders live most of their life in the woods and are breeding in the woods, laying their eggs in logs and underneath rocks. However, they're one of the most common salamanders in the eastern forests, and so they sometimes will be just crossing the road um, on wet, warm nights going in between patches of forests. This is another small, slender salamander that often is confused with the four-toed salamander. It has a gray-black body um, with this bright, rusty red stripe down its back. Although some color morphs are all gray, that's the lead morph, and some are bright red all over. Here are a couple other eastern red-backed salamanders. The photo on the left, you see a salam uh, red-backed salamander that has a back that is a much lighter color, almost a tan brown rather than a bright rusty red. And on the right, one of the lead-backed morphs that is all dark. 
And you can see from the photo on the right, that is one of the most common and widely distributed salamanders in the state. Here we have an almost entirely aquatic salamander, our eastern newt. They live all of their adult life in uh, pools and ponds. However, the young red eft phase will often migrate and move to find new pools to spend their adulthood. So we sometimes encounter these young eastern newts, the red eft's, uh, moving at crossing sites. Moving on to the frogs that we may encounter. The most easily identified is the American toad. Mm -hmm. Most people know this from childhood as a large warty frog with heavy legs um, and prominent eyes and it's distinctly warty skin. They are a later spring breeder, so we're often seeing American toads moving across roads, um, perhaps after uh, spotted salamanders and wood frogs have already ended their migration. And they're um, spending about a month as a tadpole, um, as a tadpole before small toadlets are leaving the pond and moving back onto land. Our smallest frog. Uh, that's moving at road crossing sites is the spring peeper. It's one that most people are familiar with by its sound. It's only uh, growing up to an inch and a half long, so for me it's about the size of my thumb. They're very small, uh, brown uh, to beige, and have this distinct X pattern across their back, which gives them their Latin name Crucifer. They're very hard to find at crossing sites um, as they are really small. So it, this takes a, a lot of searching with a flashlight for, for, for small things that are hopping low to the road. In the spring, these um, frogs are moving from forested areas and uplands down to wetlands where they're going to lay their eggs. Um, they gather in large groups in leaf litter and sedge uh, around the edge of the pool where they'll display. The males will actually climb up uh, onto sedges and other uh, vegetation and do these displays where they inflate their throat pouch uh, to make that really loud peep. The wood frog is a, one of our most widely distributed frogs in Vermont, although it's rather hard to find unless it moves blending in really well to leaf litter with its brown to beige color. Uh, it also has a dark mask that helps in identifying it, and two ridges that run down either side of its back. It has a unique quack, sort of like a duck, and that's its call, that's often found in the woods, in vernal pools, and fish-free wetlands in the spring. They're what are called explosive breeders, where large groups of wood frogs will suddenly get together to breed and create quite a, a chorus in the spring. It's often early in the spring, one of our earliest breeders, and the chorus of wood frogs can be heard even in late March. A fun fact about wood frogs is they actually survive the winter by freezing solid. Wood frogs in the fall will nestle under leaves, their heart and lungs will slow to a standstill, and special sugars and proteins inside the frog will prevent their cells from breaking down as they undergo a freezing process. And then in the spring, when it gets warmer, they will actually thaw out. Their heart and lungs will start to work fully again, and they'll jump back into life. A few additional resources if you want to study your frogs and salamanders more before you go out to survey. The, the first and best resource is the Vermont Reptile and Amphibian Atlas, vtherpatlas.org. This site um, is mainly the work of Jim Andrews and volunteers throughout the state who have submitted um, documentation of amphibians and reptiles. And on that site, you'll find full profiles 
of all the species in Vermont. Another resource is the Vermont Atlas of Life, which is run by the Vermont Center for Eco Studies. Their iNaturalist page allows you to search and see a real-time distribution of reports of amphibians throughout the state. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out for, uh, to us at North Branch Nature Center.